All right, welcome in uh, the NBA afternoon update here on Wager Talk TV. I'm Joe Ranieri. Certainly appreciate you stopping by here today as we only have four games in the NBA here tonight. But can I tell you, each and every one of them has got a little juice. Each and every one of them uh, means something here in the final stretch of the regular season to these teams uh, playing. So we're going to give you all the latest information you need to know about these games, who's in, who's out. Where have the lines been going? We'll have a same game parlay for you. We'll tell you what the contrarian gods are looking at. And of course, maybe a best bet. But more importantly, it's all about you guys. Uh, any questions, comments uh, that you've got about the games here tonight, we want to hear about them. So go ahead and drop them in uh, in the chat room. We'll get to as many as we can as we welcome in. The one and only the prop god, Andy Lang, is in the house, as is the one and only Mr. Rob Vino here with the NBA here tonight. And I guess the thing that stuck out uh, right away here, and we'll go through these games, uh, but Vino, it looks like uh, a lot of people were excited about the Laker game, uh, except LeBron, because he's not in here. I guess that's the big news uh, from earlier today. LeBron's like, nah. I'm good. Uh, the Bucks. I'm seeing Patrick Beverly out, Chris Middleton active, Giannis active, uh, and LeBron really seems to be the big name uh, for the Lakers. And once again, two-point line move, I think, seven, seven and a half to nine and a half, you know? Yep, exactly right, Joe. And a little push to the under where the total is concerned, 234 opener. You can find it as low as 231 and a half right now. You can get some 232s. Um, let's hit on this game while we're here. Sort of a big game breakdown yep. of um, Lakers Bucks. Uh, for the Bucks side, the only really missing piece is Patrick Beverly won't be out there. But what's good news for the Bucks is that they're now in their third consecutive game with, I guess, what they would refer to Joe as their big three: Giannis, Damian Lillard, and Chris Middleton. Um, Last three games he's played it. He actually looked pretty sharp in his first one. And the Bucks offense has put up 115, 118, and 119 with him in the lineup. So offense coming back to form a little bit for Milwaukee. Um, both teams, I think the reason why LeBron sits here is both of these teams are fairly safe, at least for today, in their spot in the standings as far as playoffs are concerned. For Milwaukee, they're in the two spot in the East. Um, two and a half games ahead of Cleveland, who sits in third. And for the Lakers, they're ahead of Golden State by two and a half games in that nine spot and two and a half games behind Phoenix in the eight. So really, Lakers can't go anywhere here. So might as well rest LeBron in this instance. Um, let's start with the obvious, right? A contrarian gods would likely be on the Lakers here. No LeBron. Mm. Um, so they're supposed to win the game straight up, right? Because that's the way things go every single night in the NBA. Um, but I'd rather talk about the total here. LeBron James has missed nine games for the Lakers so far this season. The Lakers, surprisingly, are 7-2 and two to the over in those nine games without LeBron James. Um, 231 and a half tonight's total. In those nine games, they've exceeded that six times without LeBron. So certainly they score quite a bit when he's not on the floor. It doesn't seem to bug them and their opponents. They also allow quite a bit. The opponents have gotten 118 or better in seven of those nine games. Lakers on the road, not a good defensive team. They're 21 and 11 to the over on the road. They allow 121.2 points per game on the road. So this could be, I mentioned earlier that Milwaukee's offense with Middleton seems to be getting into some kind of a rhythm. This could be a good night for them. If you're looking at team totals, which is where I looked in this game, I think the bucks were 120 and a half team total seems to me they could get to 121 in this game. The bucks, once again, four consecutive games with 115 or better. Those games were against Boston. Good defense, Oklahoma city, good defense. Although lately they've crumbled a little bit, Brooklyn and Phoenix. Um, you know, those four defenses are as good as the Lakers defenses. And for the Bucks, the shooting percentages have gone way up, 53.3% from the field or better in four of their last five. To me, Joe, um, I don't want to deal with the side because the NBA, like I said earlier, mega star player or team's top player sits, you know, 
the, the team wins anyway. So let's not get involved with this side. But I do think there's a lot of indications here that Milwaukee's working to get their offense back, that Los Angeles gives up enough points, and that L.A. without LeBron tends to play games that go over. So for me, big game breakdown. I'd probably be looking at Milwaukee team total up and over 120 and a half. Ooh, don't hate that uh, at all, actually, uh, there, Vino. It's an interesting uh, total, too, in this game here, given the fact that uh, it opened up 219, 219 and a half. We're seeing 217. Uh, I'm sorry, wrong game. Let me move down one spot. Uh, it opened up at 232 and a half. We're seeing uh, 231s uh, starting to pop up here. Again, no LeBron, and you're spot on here, Vino. This has got contrarian gods. Written all over it here with a two-point move. I thought maybe the line was a little little steep this morning at seven, seven and a half. But no LeBron. And we've seen this thing go uh, through the roof here. And uh, Andy Lang here tonight. I know you've got a uh, an SGP coming up for a same-game parlay. Uh, but was there anybody in particular in this Lakers-Bucks game from a prop betting perspective that uh, maybe we should be focusing on? Yeah, there's a few things we can look at in this game. Um, in our chat room, A Life in Vegas says, if LeBron is out, I was thinking about D'Lo, but not sure if points or points plus assists. Mm. He's on the right track. The category is rebounds plus assists. He goes over mm. pretty much every single time LeBron is out. Uh, he's played nine games without LeBron in the lineup this season. He's gone over eight of those. The number is 11 and a half. And the game he didn't go over was the game he had 11. Over, um, So it, th that's the category is the rebounds plus assists. Um, Austin Reeves has been shooting the ball pretty decent. So there's assists to be had there. Obviously, Anthony Davis, when he gets the ball inside, there's assists to be had there. And then when Le there's no LeBron, there's rebounds uh, available. So uh, the rebounds plus assists is a good one. I did have to to kind of chuckle. The player in this game who has the longest streak of going over their points could give you 20 guesses, and you would never guess it's Jay Crowder. He's, he's mm. gone over his point in five straight games. It's low. Wow. It's four. Yeah, it's four and a half. He's had nine, 18, seven, six, and 10. Obviously, he's not getting a ton of shots, but I, I, four and a half, that's a – that's a rebound put back and one made three pointer uh, for Jay Crowder. So um, listen, you, you don't really want to turn on the TV or, or, or the computer to watch Jay Crowder, but it's a really good prop. It's, it's been hitting. Um, so you really only need a couple baskets that, to get over there, but uh, the best play is by far D'Angelo Russell over 11 and a half rebounds and assists. maybe a little sprinkle on Jay Crowder for fun. See, that's what I am talking about here, Andy. Uh, see it, uh, don't overthink it, get it done. If it ain't broke, don't fix it here. Big shout out to those of you joining us here in the chat rooms, those on your mobile device hanging out on the uh, live YouTube short stream. We certainly appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We got some questions uh, coming in already. And uh, guys, again, this is what uh, this is what we've got here with the uh, NBA afternoon update here on Wager Talk. It's all about trying to put all the information we've got now throughout the day, try to put it to pretty good use. And any questions that you guys have, we'll do our best here to go over them. Only four games on the card here tonight, and we do have some interesting ones coming in here. The latest right now, though, with LeBron being out, uh, that's the big one here. And I think the question coming in, uh, from let me get sure this is uh oh cash dizzy in the house here plus 10 vino at a plus 10 if it gets the double digits is it kind of hard because that's what the contrarian gods would look at contrarian gods would look at the lakers all night long here you know you still got a uh you still got an eyebrow you got no brawn but you still got plenty enough in there to cause uh to cause hell so uh if it gets the double digits would you look at that way well, I think you'd have to just based, like I was saying earlier, on these results that come in in the NBA. The, and it's a national TV game, I believe, as well, which, yes. you know, like to keep those a little bit close, right, to keep the audience tuned in. Um, and Milwaukee, Joe, to get more to a fundamental matchup, 
perspective, Milwaukee still, as much as Doc Rivers wants to preach, oh, we're getting better defensively, they're really not getting better defensively. And mm. the Lakers, if nothing else, even without LeBron, we quoted the numbers earlier, they can score. And to stick within 10 in a game that, <clears throat> you know, for Milwaukee, yes, it's important. But as I said earlier, where standings are concerned, it's not back against the wall, must win situation here. Um, they've got some breathing room between themselves and the next team behind them, as do the Lakers. So you could see the game getting a little bit loose here, higher scoring um, and, and the Lakers capability to stay within 10 with guys that they have on the floor who can, you know, there's a lot of scorers there, as you mentioned. So I, I would look that way, Joe. I wouldn't trust Milwaukee in a double digit favorite role without their defense, um, without their issues being settled, which they're not right now. Probably the way I'd look Lakers plus 10 didn't bet it, but that's the way I'd probably look. Milwaukee four and one straight up and against the number guys in their last five games. Middleton certainly is a nice addition back in the fold there. So uh, they are getting a little bit healthier. And Giannis, uh, again, he's already been uh, labeled to go here. So this should be uh, this should be an interesting one here tonight. So hope that helped there. We do have a bunch of questions coming in. Well, actually, let me do this, too. Uh, those of you joining us on the YouTube shorts feed, there is a poll question up there. And I'm asking all of you to chime in and tell me which one you think won't be. Which team is missing the playoffs this season? Is it Golden State? Is it the Lakers? Is it Dallas? Or is it the Houston Rockets? Robert, our producer, cannot wait to hear who you guys are going to pick there. Uh, so go ahead. Hit us up here right now if you can. Golden State, Lakers, Dallas, Houston. Throw a vote in there. We'll see uh, at the end of the show what it is that you guys want to get done here. How about Dallas tonight? Dallas taking on Sacramento. And, Vino, I'm still seeing Doncic questionable, Maxi Kleber questionable, uh, Trey Lyles and Huerta, the usual here for Sacramento. I'm also seeing this thing opened up one and a half for Sacramento, now up to two and a half. Uh, interestingly enough, the total also seems to be crashing a little bit, 235. Uh, to 232 and a half. What are you thinking about the Dallas uh, game here? Anything shocking you about this line yet? Well, it looks like um, some early money probably doesn't think Luca would go. That's the only reason you can think of for this game to push towards Sacramento and push toward the under at the same time, those two correlating with maybe a Luca absence. But I wouldn't be so quick to assume no Luca here, Joe. This is the first mm. of back-to-backs between these two teams. They're going to play again in Sacramento, but they get two days off, two full days off. They play again on the 29th. Um, they sit in a flat-footed tie. I guess Sacramento owns the um, tiebreaker edge because they are listed as the lead team right now for that sixth seed in the uh, N NBA Western Conference playoff race. They're both 42 and 29, big games for both teams. I talked earlier about how Milwaukee's defense not quite fixed, but Dallas's defense during this run, Joe, and it's been quite a run. I think nine and one or eight and one uh, straight up and against the spread in their last night. Mm. But how about these numbers allowed over the course of their last seven? 92, 99, 105, 107, 97. 105 for the Dallas Mavericks in six of their last seven games, knowing what we've known about their defense the last couple of years to have allowed a high of 107 points means they're starting to turn the corner here defensively. They're starting to fix things. And I think it really correlates to the two big guys in the middle. When you have Daniel Gafford now, and when you have Derek Lively, the rookie from Duke, they patrol the rim and Dallas is clamped down. Uh, Sacramento, Mike Brown's another one of those mm. guys who wants to tell us every day that they're preaching defense, but Sacramento <laughs> doesn't always come mm. with a lot of defense. Um, last night, first game back off of a road trip against Philadelphia, who was in their fourth game of a four-game road trip, and it was back-to-back -back for the Sixers. Sacramento, they look kind of sloppy, haphazard, but they were able to get that win by margin because Philadelphia was just tired and without – I think Kelly Oubre didn't play last night. But maybe tonight, second of back-to-back -back at home, maybe Sacramento comes with better legs. I'm not sure. 
I would think, Joe, that first thing is I wouldn't disagree with under, even if Luca plays. And because oh. of Dallas's defensive numbers lately, it seems like they're focused on that end. Um, but boy, I, I'd have to like the Maverick side here if he does play. The matchups in the backcourt, I mean, De'Aaron Fox obviously won't guard Luca. He'll try and guard Kyrie. But Keon Ellis has, everybody has their hands full with Luca. He's been a machine as of late. So I think you have to wait on the injury report here. But my initial lean, especially if Luca goes, would be toward Dallas in this game and um, maybe a little bit toward the under. Ooh, kind of like that. Oh, we got a bunch, uh, a bunch of folks in the chat room here on this game, uh, Andy. Uh, you got to love Buck Buck. Outstanding name across the board. Just a brown <laughs> circle with the letter B in the middle of it. Outstanding Buck Buck on YouTube. Uh, he's calling the Mavs. A trap play here tonight, says um, the under in the Kings-Mavs could be a trap play here as well. Uh, listen, this game is huge for both of these teams in a Western Conference race, right? They're both separated by, what, a half a game, sixth and seventh in the conference standings here. Uh, these two teams, are again, are going to meet on Thursday here, Andy, but this game will go a long way in deciding who gets that final, that six seed there, and doesn't have to worry about some play-in games and all that other, all those other shenanigans that nobody wants to be in. So uh, in this matchup here tonight, and I didn't even ask you, your same game parley, is it in this game or where is it? Oh, am I supposed to read the lips? I think, uh, is that, is, do we do lip, re is this the part of the show where it's lip reading? Go ahead. Let me see, is Andy. Boy, got you. Is it, is oh, it, yes. There we go. Thank God. <laughs> so much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some would say that was my best work. Uh, muted there. Yes. Uh, no, we're, <laughs> he, uh, we're going to the Warriors <laughs> game for the same game parlay. A couple of player props I like in this one. Darren Fox loves scoring lots of points on the Dallas Mavericks. Last five games he's played Dallas. He's averaging 32.2 points, and they've got his number at 26 and a half. And it makes sense. This is a Dallas team that I, their defense has been much better. But on the perimeter, uh, listen, De'Aaron Fox is really tough to guard anyways. But Kyrie and Luka are really going to struggle there. So you might look at De'Aaron Fox. And then I think I got to buy into Daniel Gafford here being consistent. He, uh, his his uh, PRA mm. for tonight, points, rebounds, and assists is 20 and a half. He's absolutely flown over this total. 24, 36, and 29 the last three games. And I know this is a back-to-back -back situation. Uh, this is the second back-to-back -back situation he's had with his new team. The last time he had this, on the second leg of the back-to-back, -back, he put up 19 points and 15 rebounds against Golden State. Mm. So he's not, pl he's not playing so many minutes that he should be tired on a back-to-back, -back, but he's playing enough minutes to really, really pack the stat sheet. And, uh, an abnormal amount of assists the last couple games. You wouldn't think this guy would be an assist machine, but he's had five in the last couple games. So he's doing a nice job with the stats. He's fitting in really, really well with his new team. So I look at uh, De'Aaron Fox over his points and Daniel Gafford over his points, rebounds, and assists. Yeah, I will say this about uh, Buck Buck. Again, great, great name there on YouTube. And uh, we appreciate you hanging here. Uh, it does appear, I mean... It, all the tickets and money that I'm seeing across the board here, Vino, coming in on Dallas. And yet the line is moving towards Sacramento since the open of one and a half, seeing the two and a half now. And uh, it's interesting without even knowing whether or not Doncic is gone. I'm with you. I think Doncic goes one way or the other. But Sacramento is 2-0 and straight up and against the number against Dallas this year. Uh, so, but I think they've only played of those two games. I think. Kyrie and Doncic were only in one of them. I think one or the other was missing in the second game. So if Doncic goes here tonight, uh, I get the love for Dallas, but it, it appears some of that sharper money coming in looks like they're backing Sacramento here on the back of a uh, second of a back-to-back. -back. Yeah, and just real quick, Joe, to um, defend Sacramento here for those who want to play them. Hey, last night, like I say, they looked a little – haphazard a little lackadaisical it was the first we always talk about first game home after a road trip they just happened to have a more tired opponent and sacramento didn't look really interested but they missed 28 
three-pointers last night. And you can't miss 28 three-pointers. That's 84 points mm. down the drain. Just a couple of yep. dunks. Um, Keegan Murray, in particular, had a wide-open dunk on a fast break at the back of the rim. So they weren't really there last night. Maybe they were looking ahead to this. I could see Sacramento putting forth a much better offensive effort here. And to the point of Dallas's defense, again, I think I don't know how many of the De'Aaron Fox games saw Gafford and Lively mm-hmm. defending the rim. But De'Aaron Fox is a guy who really likes to penetrate. And now they've got a little bit. That's, I think that's why Dallas is playing better defense anyway. It has got nothing to do with Kyrie dedicating himself to the defensive end of the floor. Yep. It's got nothing with Luka dedicating himself to the defensive end of the floor. It's because they finally have somebody back there who can defend the rim. So um, interesting game. And and it's, you know, this is one of those must wins. You're going to play two. Yep. It, you might want to count if you don't want to play the game counter punch. Whichever way this game goes tonight, come back three days from now and play the other way because it does look like a series split would be in order for these two. It's also just an awful spot for Sacramento, right? Vino, this is what mm-hmm. fifth game, seven mm-hmm. days, no rest. Uh, that was also, I believe, uh, didn't they? They uh, road trip out east. I think they had three or right. four games out there along the way. So. It, it's not a great spot here, but you know what? Because they sucked so early on in the season and blew a lot of games. They won last year, especially at home. They have been burning tickets, uh, laying any monies with Sacramento at home this year has been an absolute uh, losing proposition here. But the market uh, certainly uh, seems to think uh, at least we're starting to see enough big money to move it towards Sacramento here tonight waiting on Dallas. But I do believe once Doncic gets cleared, uh, we might see this line do a little something else here. Uh, Also, let me ask you, because I know it was brought up in the chat room, uh, Andy, uh, Sabonis, do they even offer the double-double anymore? I can't even imagine what the (laughs) minus money must be in this. I mean, what are you going to lay? Like 5,000 in order to get 100? Like, what what is going on? Uh, no, he's just a, a complete triple double machine. It's not even a yeah, double double. 25th. Uh, let me, uh, minus 1600 <laughs> live odds. Minus 1600. Wow. For the double double? For a double double. For a double double. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's Will Chamberlain numbers. That's, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah. Wow. That's, so that, yeah, that's the world we're living in. Um, so traditionally I don't think he's, I, I think he's strong. It's we, it's one of these weird things where he hasn't actually grabbed a bunch of rebounds against Dallas. I was looking at his numbers because I was thinking, oh, I bet he, I bet he's a really good one. But he actually, the numbers are so inflated with him that there's actually value on the under just because everyone, oh, triple double, and then they put his PRA at like forty eight and a half. And when you think about it, you can have a really good game and still go under forty eight and a half. So you mm-hmm. know, uh, I. I won't be playing it. I mean, any type of foul trouble or any, you know, if he passes the ball and some guys misses some wide open shots, all of a sudden it does, doesn't have a triple double. And I think the books are all over. But yeah, minus 1600 for double double is quite the price. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. 54th in a row, I think was last night, you know, but he did, I think the 25th triple double was also a and i'm wondering what that what's that price andy for the triple double with him because he joined some elite company oscar robinson i mean uh westbrook uh there's only been five dudes that have uh that have had 25 or more triple doubles in a season so i I, the guy is an absolute machine but unfortunately we can't hop on that train now andy because it's probably minus eight thousand again isn't it no it's plus one fifty for triple double, so not uh, not not too bad odds. It's 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 not terrible. It's just it's a lot yeah. to it's a lot to ask night in and night out. But he's been doing it. Yeah. But I don't know. It, I, now I, he's I a machine. This, Rob, Rob, he's a machine. But Rob brought up a good point. These are pretty competitive games. These aren't mailing mm-hmm. games that you know that he can take it easier. Yep. That anybody can really take it easy. So you would expect a, a really, really full effort. So it's not the worst bet on the board tonight. That's for sure. 
All right, big shout out to S. Dot Warrior. Apparently, he got the ankle bracelet off, so he's allowed back on the internet. Uh, that's fantastic, S. Dot Warrior. Pleasure to see you there. Long uh, time. I bet you I, I know who he's on in this Miami Heat yeah. game. And let's get you updated with what's going on in that one. And again, guys, if you're joining us here today, uh, on any one of the streams, whether it be uh, Instagram, uh, welcome in. We appreciate you. Or those watching on your mobile device like S. Warrior, hanging out in the YouTube shorts feed, we appreciate you. And those of you with your feet up on the desktop or TV hanging out with us, uh, we appreciate all of you. Any questions, comments, best bets that you guys might have, drop them into the chat room because we do have a update on our poll question about whether or not who misses the playoffs this season, Golden State, the Lakers, Dallas, or Houston, and Golden State still hovering around that 49% mark here, and Houston is a close second, but I don't know that I want to get in front of that Houston train uh, right now here. You know who's not on that list? The Miami Heat, uh, Rob Vino. Uh, interesting game here tonight. Two seventeen and a half currently is the total. This was as high as or as 219, 219 and a half this morning. Uh, the numbers are coming in towards the Golden State Warriors. Shocker here. I'm seeing two and a half now showing up. You know, it was one and a half uh, this morning, one, one and a half. But it looks like from an injury situation, we still don't know. Jaime Hawkes, Kevin Love, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson out, Tyler Hero out. But those three guys... Uh, that's a lot of depth for the Miami Heat. They're used to it, but I get why the money is rolling in towards uh, the Golden State Warriors at this point. You talk about desperate, Joe. I mean, I don't think Golden State expected that, you know, 70 games into the season, they were going to be fighting for their play-in lives, not even play-off, play-in, with the Houston Rockets, of all people. Um, <clears throat> but... Such is what's happened to Golden State. Three and six straight up, three and six against the spread. Their last nine games, the small lineup, you know, it's great for offense, but it hasn't really worked in winning games. It'll be an interesting game because I saw a quote from Bam Adebayo who basically said these games during the regular season, the way they're played doesn't mean anything. When the playoffs come, the games all slow down and they're possession by possession. It just gives you the idea that that's how Miami wants to play Golden State tonight. And Golden State wants to play the exact opposite way. So it'll be a great contrast in styles here. Can Golden State force tempo with the smaller lineup? Can Miami slow it down with what they like to do? Somewhere in between is probably the correct answer throughout the 48 minutes. Um, it's interesting that Jimmy is probable tonight. Jimmy Butler, generally when he decides to play, it's a meaningful game for Miami, guys. Um, they're not quite out of the woods yet either because they're still a play-in team one game behind Indiana, who put a little pressure on them last night by winning their game out West. Um, but yeah, for Miami, they've got to win to get into the playoffs without having to risk it in a play-in game. So, uh, you know, it's important for both sides. I, I tell you the truth, you can't trust Golden State. Steve Kerr didn't have a resounding amount of confidence in a couple of quotes that he had where he basically said, it's been difficult on Steph Curry the last month, month and a half, and we can't just rely on Steph to win games for us, kind of throwing the rest of the team under the bus here for not helping out their star player. We'll see if he gets help tonight, but I have to tell you, if it were me, I'd probably lean toward the home team Miami here at this point in time. Yeah, I, let me. Uh, I agree with you here. I do think the value is on uh, Miami at this point. Uh, Golden State... I I mean, listen, you guys, 50% uh, in the poll right now believe Golden State's in trouble, but we've known this for the last two months. If it wasn't for past right. experience with the Golden State Warriors, they're living off of what they used to be. I don't think uh, the market is living on what they are right now, and that's a team uh, in trouble. The name that wasn't on that list for me, Andy, uh, and I know you, uh, you've you got a same-game parlay in this game coming up, so I can't wait to hear this. But the name that was absent on that injury report is the only guy that I care about. Well, two, uh, Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler are not on that report, which is plenty enough for me to take Miami getting points at home in this one. But I can't stress enough how Rob is right about Golden State. This is I, who in the world 
is going to trust Golden State at this point in the season to be laying a number on the road against a team that is in the playoffs here in Miami. So I think the value is all in on Miami here. But from an SGP standpoint, lay this game out for us, Andy. Who are you going with here tonight? Uh, sometimes I get a headache looking at who the Miami Heat are playing and starting. <laughs> like, I mean, Patty Mills, <laughs> and and yet yeah. he's probably going to be awesome tonight. <laughs> like, like, he's just like, where do they find Terry Rozier and Patty Mills? What were the uh, Rob? What were the uh, if, yeah. I, if I were to give you the odds at the beginning of the season that Miami would be throwing out the starting backcourt of Terry Rozier and? Eddie Mills. Uh, so this is this is what Miami does, and this is why I, I, I. You, you know, Eric Spolstra's two hundred to one to be coach of the year. Two hundred to one. Uh, and you know, Joe Mazzulla's twelve to one. He's only got the best team in the league with the best record. But I digress. All right, let's do a same game parlay here. Um, we'll start with Chris Paul over two and a half assists. Uh, he's had four or more in nine straight games. That's going to be the first leg. He's been pretty consistent with this number. I'm going to go with the Golden State team total over 100 and a half. They've only gone under this total three times this entire year. And I know Miami is slow paced, but this is a Golden State team that cannot be screwing around. So I'll take that one as my second leg. And then Terry Rozier, I just need him to have one steal. He's had a steal in 12 out of the last 14 games. And this is a Golden State team. That is 23rd in turnovers per game. So I got Chris Paul over two and a half assists. Golden State team total over 100 and a half. Rozier to have a steal. That gets me just over the even mark at plus 106. That's on DraftKings. And that's your same game parlay of the day. I uh, love, love, love that here. Uh, as we get ready for only a four game slate, Chris Paul over those two and a half assists here. That team total over 100 and a half. I. Vino, I was all over the under this morning. It was 218 and a half uh, when I was uh, doing the uh, morning show on that other network today. And I said, there's just, there's no way. This feels like a team, the first one, 105, 106 wins this game. I don't see any sort of track meet here. You and I talked about it a couple of times. Uh, this is a Miami team that has pumped the brakes. And we were getting a lot of overs, uh, if you remember, you know, in the first half of the season with them, that was a bit head scratching. But this is much more the style of the Miami Heat team that we thought. I don't see Golden State uh, running up and down the court here. I thought 218, 219 was a big number. It's at 217 and a half. The market is agreeing. Uh, you know, Andy's got a point with the 100 uh, the team total in there. But how do you see this going for a total tonight? I mean, both can be true at the same time, right, Joe? You yeah. could be looking at a 105-102 game here. Um, it fits with the point spread that the oddsmakers are throwing at you. It fits with the game going under, and it fits with – I mean, to bet Golden State over 100 and a half, I mean, you just have to blindly take, make that bet uh, mechanically. As Andy said, what do you say, one time all season long? I mean, you just have to throw it out there for some portion of this 48 minutes – they'll get the pace up a little bit, whether it be 10 minutes out of 48, whether it be 12 minutes, whatever. There's going to be a couple of spurts where they get it up and down. You know, Steph bangs a couple back-to-back -back threes. Pajemski helps out. Somebody helps out. And that will happen here. So 100 and a half, certainly. Um, I think a good bet that Andy brought up for Golden State to get over. But again, the total does seem, and I read you the quote, Bam was like, you know, what's been done so far is meaningless. You get closer to the playoffs and the game slow down possession by possession. And that could mean the end of the game. If this game is close, like the line would suggest, then we get a lot of half court. Every possession counts. But um, I, I do think both of those things could be true at the same time. I like the Miami side. It would fit that too. I like the Miami side. I like um, yeah. under 217 that you brought up in Golden State to get to 101. Like I said, I used to have a saying, Joe, you remember back in the playoffs, um, it, it, Miami always gets shortchanged with their totals. And yeah. you yeah. say, you know, if they can get to 106, we're going to be good here. And Miami may get to 106. And if they win at 106, then you're going to be good on all angles, probably. Yeah, well, it should be also brought up, too, that, you know, Kevin Love, Jaime Hockey, they, they could all be going. They're questionable here now, but the reports mm -hmm. coming out, 
of Miami have been that they are getting healthier, this team. So Tyler Hero is the, really the one final piece that we're uh, hoping uh, is able to get back here. But you want to give me the two and a half because I think if uh, if Hakez or Love or both are ruled in, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to get plus uh, plus points, plus money here uh, anymore. So big shout out to those of you. Kelsey, uh, welcome in, hanging out with us here on uh, – uh, on the uh, on your mobile device there on our YouTube shorts feed. Guys, don't forget, drop any questions or best bets that you got here for tonight. We can discuss them, go over them, come up with, uh, come up with a game plan to make it a profitable evening. And uh, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you're new here, uh, welcome into the Wager Talk TV family. Uh, even the guy that, uh, for some reason, has a clown button stuck on his keyboard. Uh, so let's move on to the final game, uh, if we could here. And we're going to take a look at the Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the New Orleans Pelicans. And this, I don't know, this should be, I think, the game of the night. The only person I'm seeing out, Vino, on the latest is, is Ingram, right? Uh, I'm not seeing any question marks around anything to do with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I am seeing that... Um, Publicly, it looks like OKC getting more of the tickets, more of the bets. But the problem with that is that they opened up as a two, two and a half point favorite. It's down to one. So the market seems to be uh, looking towards uh, the New Orleans Pelicans, maybe not trusting OKC as a road favorite here tonight. What do you think about this one? Well, Oklahoma City point spread wise has been in a complete tailspin lately, right? Last mm. 10 games, they're two and eight against the number. Now here you have a number where you're basically just asking them if you want to bet them, asking them to win the game. And, you know, as far as games are concerned, they're seven and three uh, straight up despite the two and eight against the spread mark. So they've been involved in some games where they've laid heavy numbers, haven't come through. But here you're talking about um, a couple of teams that, again, Playoff implications abound with about a dozen left to go here. OKC now one full game behind the Denver Nuggets. They've lost their hold on that number one seed. Denver has come from, I think, the three seed and now taken over there. So for Oklahoma City, very important. I think they want the entire Western Conference playoffs to have to run through their home court for Sacramento, or excuse me, um, for New Orleans. They're in a flat-footed tie with the Clippers for the four spot. Both have the same exact record. Again, I think that the Pelicans own the tiebreaker, which is why they're listed as the four seed right now in the Clips as the five. Um, but again, four comes with home floor advantage in the first round. So you want to have that if you're New Orleans. Playing without Brandon Ingram, very, very tough, though, um, for New Orleans. And I don't know, if Oklahoma City comes to play here, I don't know that they don't get the job done. I really think... At this point in time, they're the deeper team. They're the better team. They won in this building already this season by 24 points, 107 to 83. The other game that they played much earlier in the year, New Orleans won in OKC by four. So it's a season split. This will um, decide the season series. But again, without Ingram, I just don't know that Zion and CJ McCollum and Valachunas are enough to carry this team past Oklahoma City. I think there's too, too much depth too much um you know in the way of defense when they're fully focused and that defense hasn't been around lately for oklahoma city i didn't play it um because i do respect the new orleans home floor but i think if i had to i would be on okc here probably a good in-game bet joe because if one of mm. these teams races out to a double digit lead i think you could come back with the team that's behind at that point in time and figure this thing to end up somewhere close so it, it, it should be the game tonight. It's interesting in the uh, in the chat room here, guys, and welcome in if you're just uh, joining us here, uh, whether it be on Instagram, YouTube, or on your mobile there with YouTube Shorts. We appreciate you hanging out. Uh, it seems to be a lot of love for the Pelicans uh, here tonight, Andy. Looks like uh, a lot of the a lot of the comments here just Pelicans, Pelicans. Uh, Pelicans, no Ingram, no chance, says Frank there. I, I don't know about that. Uh, not sure that the Pelicans, even without Ingram, is a train I want to get in front of. But how about you here? How would you focus the, the prop betting market here? Well, there's one prop that uh, is a really good 
cut a little case study here, and it's Josh Gideon is three pointers. So Ooh. the books have been putting out over under just just half a three pointer. So will he make one? And he has been on fire. He's made eleven games in a row and nineteen out of twenty four to the point where the books have juiced it up to almost minus two fifty. But when you're hitting at that clip, it's still worth the play. I saw today that DraftKings has moved this number to one and a half made three pointers. And this is where I really love the prop markets because the books have given us a golden opportunity. If you move the line from Josh Giddy from over half to over one and a half, the results change drastically. That makes the mm. under 15 and three because he keeps landing on one. He keeps making just one three pointer. So the books are in this tough spot where it's like, do we put out, over half or do we put out one and a half and regardless mm. of what number they put out there's value on either side so if they're at one and a half i'm taking the under if it's at half i'm taking the over so that's the way i'm playing josh giddy depending on what number you see and yeah we mentioned that brandon ingram was out so with ingram out i gotta look at cj mccollum over four and a half assists he's played seven games without ingram this season gone over in six of those games I played earlier this year against Oklahoma City without Ingram, and he went over. So try to take advantage of uh, Ingram being out. I know a lot of people are talking about Zion. Uh, points, rebounds, and assists is a popular play. I would just say I feel like the books have adjusted that number a little bit good. Um, Zion has been going way under his assists recently, uh, so you might look at an under on Zion. But I think the books have adjusted Zion, so I'm going to go with C.J. McCollum, four and a half assists. Um, I'm just I'm getting word here that apparently Jimmy Butler has been traded to OKC tonight just so he can stick his foot up the Pelicans ass in this game. Just I don't know if that's true or it's not. Big Daddy is reporting it in the chat room, but that's a quality point. Uh, Big Daddy uh, three and nine against the number in the last 12. Uh, and I think the market is finally starting to come around. You know, you mentioned OKC is just. I mean, they're seven to three in game, right? They've won the games, but the market has been yeah. just over the top on them here. And Brandon Ingram, they better get used to it because this knee injury is being reported as, yeah, ever since uh, he went down against Orlando, that this may not be, you know, they, he may not be back next week. Uh, let's just put it that way. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked, you know, if this thing goes to pick him at all, would you uh, be? Although, the hesitation in the chat room, I get it, uh, on New Orleans without Ingram, but they do have enough physicality to give OKC some issues, and that's usually where they struggle. Yeah, well, absolutely, Joe. And it, the physicality issues would be down low. However, I think that Chet Holmgren presents – a direct opposite problem for New Orleans and a guy like Valanchunas on the other end, right? Chet Holmgren can drag Valanchunas out from where he likes to be in the paint. Got to go cover Chet because he's been a terrific perimeter player this year. He's been more than I expected to tell you the truth. So Oklahoma City has weapons in other ways that can cause problems. I just think they're deeper. They're probably quick enough. For Oklahoma City, real quick, guys, they play tomorrow night as well, and they play the Houston Rockets at home. Mm. So, um, if you again, if you want to just um, watch this one and play tomorrow, so depending on the result tonight for OKC, I couldn't be mad at that either. But uh, for me, in this one, Oklahoma City has won games, haven't covered games, but they've won games. And all you're asking them to do tonight is win. If I didn't value the home court for New Orleans so much in this game, I probably would have been on OKC. Mm. Uh, I, I think that's not a bad way to uh, to go here. I, I think these two teams, New Orleans at home, not a bad look. Uh, we do have some interesting uh, props in this game here that uh, that we've given out here. And again, no crazy line movement, guys, that I am seeing over the last couple of minutes. Or it does look like uh, we're starting to get maybe a little bit of movement here in the Golden State uh, total here. Uh, I'm starting to see it maybe creep up. So maybe just maybe uh, we're getting one or two guys in whether it be Hackers or Kevin Love or Caleb Martin right now. But keep an eye on that. This is usually the part of the day where you start to see the market uh, move a little bit. 
And just to reiterate for those that you joined us earlier, I think we're all in con- we're all in agreement that no LeBron doesn't mean we automatically take Milwaukee, right, Vino? Uh, because if this thing gets to ten, call me crazy, man. I'll take the double digits. I don't care as long as you got the brow in there. I think uh, we're good to go. And Milwaukee's already proven, you know, they can win. But do we really trust them to cover by ten points against a desperate Lakers team? I don't think you can, Joe. I mean, honestly, the the defensive part of the game for Milwaukee still has not come around. They're just getting all these guys together in the lineup for, I think it's three games now. Middleton, mm-hmm. Giannis, uh, Dame, and Brooke Lopez and company. So, I mean, Doc Rivers told us it was going to be a work in progress. I think we all knew that already. He keeps blaming it on it's going to be a work in progress. They don't seem to be making any progress defensively, but where they're making it is on the offensive side. I do think they'll score on the Laker D tonight, but to your point, Lakers can score right back. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 10 points is a lot of points to trust Milwaukee with. They're capable of blowouts. I get it. Um, But I'm not so sure I wouldn't be on the side of taking 10 here with the Lakers. I am, like I stated earlier, I do think Milwaukee gets over that team total of 120 and a half just due to what the Lakers have done without LeBron um, in the offensive and defensive categories. But um, yeah, if you're betting side here, boy, it's hard to take Milwaukee and trust them at that price. Yeah, I agree uh, 100% uh, here tonight. Uh, Andy, tell the fine folks here. I know there's some uh, interest here in the chat room. Uh, It is, again, only four games in the NBA, but the NHL has got a packed slate here. I don't know if there's any dark tournaments here tonight. What do you got rolling there, my friend? Uh, Darts is every Thursday afternoon. Oh, Uh, We've we've got a – see, I I don't know why people laugh at that. We're only 7-2 this year. I like. I don't understand why people laugh. We've just been cashing all it for the Premier League. I'm laughing uh, to the bank, Andy. You give out dart plays, and I'm the guy that's running the like twelve books to see how I can bet it. So yes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, we do have an NHL best bet that is up. We have a five percent uh, at UFC play that is up. We're four and one on those this year. Uh, got a nice lacrosse play that is up for tomorrow. Got a four percent golf play. Honestly, just use the promo code LANG7. Works out great this week because you get $30 off a seven-day pass. So might as well lock in all plays across all sports. It does include the 5% plays, 4% plays. So off a really nice uh, uh, 2-0 night last night in NHL and NBA. So uh, promo code LANG7. Just go to my profile page, Andy Lang at wagertalk.com. Having a really, really nice run this year. I believe we're around 48 units profit across mm. all sports for 2024. So seeing the seeing the sports really, really well. Looking forward to another big night. I love that. Uh, Vino Frank writes that I wish I had a fortune teller as a girlfriend. Well, marry her. I guarantee you she'll know everything about anything that you want her to. So don't worry about whether you want to know it or you don't want it, Frank. Just go ahead and throw a ring on that finger. See how that works out for you. Rob Vino, what do you got rolling uh, tonight for you over at your page and wage and talk? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me say this first. As a guy who sits here and bangs highlight straight bets every day, I should not be laughing at Andy knowing that darts takes place every Thursday afternoon. Um, you, you bet what you can win with, and certainly if darts are profitable, then darts it is. Um, wait, and I'm still scrolling down trying to find Steve Merrill's free play. Joe, is that up yet? I can't. Yeah, no, can't no, it's, it's not thing. there anymore. Yes. <laughs> it's gone. Okay. Um, yep. If you go to my page uh, right now, you'll find a couple of college basketball uh, plays up there, up and available. NIT tonight, guys. Um, that tournament is as competitive, uh, obviously on a different level, but as competitive as the NCAA tournament. So television um, will get you those games here tonight. You can watch and win at the same time. But once again, um, couple of NIT plays along with a NBA best bet actually gave it out here on the show. So if you guys were paying attention, Bucks team total over 20 and a half is a paid play tonight. Go ahead and uh, tail if you like. And and don't forget that major league baseball starts this week. And yes. for those of you like myself who love football, the rock is bringing his UFL league opening week here this weekend. Um, I've yet to see point spreads on it, but I will be covering it throughout the season. So if you like spring football, 
you'll also be able to find that on my homepage throughout the season. Yeah, and it's a couple of interesting questions on that, uh, too, guys. Do want to remind you that, yes, Major League Baseball starts this year. So we will be rolling out, uh, of course, our first pitch uh, programming. We'll have a ton of daily content on uh, all the Major League Baseball games on a daily basis, weekly basis. And then, of course, we'll be doing an update show like this in the afternoon for pitching changes, odds changes, everything else along those lines. Uh, interesting question in the chat room here, and I apologize that uh, I didn't see who it was. Frank is apparently never getting married now. Good job, Frank. Uh, but uh, we <laughs> any Major League Baseball stat sites, you know, there was a pretty good one. If you think I can remember it, though, um, that showed all the bullpens, uh, which I thought I think it was a baseball. Yeah. Well, baseball savant, I think, is a is a must. Um, a great Major League Baseball website if you guys are looking to dive into handicapping this on a regular basis. Uh, was there anything that comes to mind for you, Vino, that uh, that you use, like a Ken Palm style? You know, it, it, the baseball bullpen, now that you brought that up, Joe, that pitch count website went away last year. I used to keep pitch counts on my own, and there were a couple of sites that brought you pitch counts. But now it, on these fantasy sites, you can find reliever pitch counts for the week, um, which to me is very important. A lot of people handicap baseball from the back end in, meaning that they're handicapping bullpens, inning seven, eight, and nine, rather than starters, um, or at least in conjunction with starters. So I think there's so much. I mean, Fangraphs obviously is a great website um, yep. for those who want to go visit that. I think that there's a a subset website inside of that. Um, I think it's called Roster Resource inside of Fangraphs. Yes. Now, it used to be a standalone yep. site, but Roster Resource is probably the best in-depth personnel of every team that you can yep. find. So um, there's a lot of baseball out there, though, and sometimes it can get overwhelming, Joe. Sometimes I find that because of the analytics that are involved with baseball, they get so deep that sometimes you overthink them, but certainly there, there's plenty out there, and I would recommend um, on top of what you said, baseball savant, obviously fan graphs is a great website as well. Yeah, guys, good stuff. You know what the best resource is? Wager Talk TV. So hit the subscribe button here, guys. We'll have you covered all throughout Major League Baseball. Andy's uh, K props and uh, approach to it is we've got you covered all year long with Major League Baseball. We love the sport. We got guys that totally immerse themselves into it. So uh, we're looking to be a great resource for you guys throughout Major League Baseball season and take advantage of the opportunity to partner up with these guys sooner rather than later. All right, uh, Rick Flair in uh, in Instagram, outstanding name, and we maybe it is Rick Flair. I thought he was dead. Good seeing you there, my friend, uh, Frank uh, S. Dot Warrior, uh, Kelsey, Big Daddy, uh, Christian in the house, Anthony. Uh, we appreciate all you guys. If you could do us a favor and Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, but give us that thumbs up. It would certainly go a long way. We certainly appreciate it. And by the way, for those total degenerates uh, that are just going to keep us on 24 hours, coming up uh, at the top of this hour will be Game Time Picks with Kelly Stewart. So we'll have more of the same, and uh, we'll be back again tomorrow uh, with, a, uh, with a loaded car in the NBA for another afternoon update. Until then, though, on behalf of Andy and Rob, we appreciate it, guys. Best of luck with all the plays tonight. Come back and join us again tomorrow. We'll do it again, guys. Good luck.